Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. If this is your first time here, my name is Risa and I was a freelance makeup artist for more than 20 years before becoming a full-time beauty content creator here on YouTube. In the past 28 days or so, my channel, Risa Does Makeup, has grown by more than 30,000 subscribers. So I'm thrilled to be able to say that. And not only do I want to extend a very warm welcome to you, I want to tell you a little bit about what I'm about. As a makeup artist for more than 20 years, I have worked on thousands of faces of all ages, of all races. And I started my YouTube channel about eight years ago because I wanted to share everything that I had learned as a professional makeup artist with you for no charge. I'm also 50 years old, and at the time I started my channel, I was obviously in my early 40s, there weren't very many people, if any, that were makeup artists sharing information here on YouTube. So that is why I started my channel, and that is what my focus has always been, sharing the best tips and techniques with you. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five techniques or hacks to get your makeup to the next level. Meaning you may sit down at your vanity and do your daytime makeup or your evening makeup and think it looks fine. Not great, but it's acceptable. The five techniques I'm going to show you today in this video are going to, again, take it to the next level. Elevate everything. These are all things that I would do as a professional makeup artist when I would do someone's makeup, either at a makeup counter where I worked or on a photo shoot or at a wedding. I did a lot of bridal makeup. And there are also steps that virtually every makeup artist working today does as well. Now, as with any video like this, there are going to be a number of people who have seen one, two, three, four, or all of these hacks already. And if that's the case, well, you're way ahead of a lot of people. But I am aware that a good portion of my audience, you're beginners. You don't know all that much about makeup. Or maybe you feel like you're at about a medium skill level and you just want to take it up a notch, then this video is for you. So without any further ado, let's get into these five makeup techniques or hacks that are going to take your makeup to the next level and make it look like a pro did it. Tip number one, if you are applying your foundation with a makeup brush, especially a medium to full coverage foundation, you run the risk of the foundation looking a little bit heavy on the skin, especially in natural light. So what I like to do and what other professionals like to do is to take a damp beauty blender and bounce it on the skin for a good 60 seconds to up to three full minutes. What this is going to do is it's going to lift up any excess foundation and give the makeup a more skin-like appearance without sacrificing any coverage. Now you may be wondering if you could just apply your makeup with the damp beauty blender. I'm sure you've seen plenty of makeup artists and influencers do that. However, anytime you use a damp makeup sponge, you are going to be sacrificing a little bit of that coverage. You are going to be shearing out the product. Now, some people want that. Say you own a foundation that has just too much coverage for your liking, you can use a damp beauty blender to shear it out and make it a little bit more wearable. However, there are a lot of people that like their medium to full coverage foundation, but they don't want it to appear so heavy and cakey. And this method of just bouncing the damp beauty blender on the skin once the foundation has been laid down is going to take your makeup up to the next level. You're going to still have that flawless look, but instead of looking heavy and cakey, it's going to look as seamless and natural as possible. Tip number two relates to concealer. How many concealer demonstrations and tutorials have you seen in the last, let's just say a year? I can tell you that I've seen hundreds and they're usually all saying some version of the same thing. And the takeaway from most of them is that you don't need to be using as much concealer as you think. When you're watching a professional makeup artist apply concealer to a client, one thing you won't see, or at least I hope you wouldn't see, is them taking the concealer applicator 
and just going in like this, taking the applicator and touching the client's skin with it. And there's two reasons why you don't see that. One, because it's unsanitary, and two, because you're not going to get the best, most flawless, most, again, natural looking application when you take the applicator and apply it right to the under eyes. What you will most likely see is the makeup artist will take a good amount of concealer and put it either on a metal mixing tray or onto the back of their hand, and then take either a brush or a sponge, I personally prefer, a brush and patting out a small amount of concealer to the under eye area that is darkest, not all over, but they always include the side of the nose that tends to get forgotten a lot and it is an area that often has a lot of discoloration. So you really don't want to miss applying the concealer to that portion of your eyes. You're going to notice you look much more awake, much more bright eyed. And also by putting the concealer on the back of your hand first, the warmth of your body is going to heat up that concealer a little bit and it's going to help the concealer really mesh and become one with your under eyes. There is a reason that a lot of makeup artists often use their fingers as well, because body heat really does play a role in how well the makeup blends into our faces. The makeup artist Francois Nars, who created the Nars makeup line, always taught up and coming makeup artists to use their fingers when applying makeup. A lot of people forget about their fingers as tools because the beauty industry is trying to sell us all these brushes and sponges when in reality your fingers are amazing, amazing tools. Unless you're using a cream eyeshadow or maybe applying a shimmer to the lid, I do recommend using traditional makeup brushes to apply your powder eyeshadows. And you will never see a professional makeup artist using dirty, brushes, whether it's on a client or even on themselves. Makeup artists know that cleaner brushes offer a better blend. And I am well aware from all of my years teaching makeup applications that blending is an area of the application where a lot of people struggle. So make sure that you're not only using the right brushes, but that those brushes are clean. I am aware that cleaning makeup brushes can be tedious, but it's also very, very satisfying. And I promise you that the next time you go do your makeup with freshly washed brushes, you are going to notice a difference. Once again, clean brushes, better blend. Tip number four to get a professional makeup look is to go monochromatic. Nothing says a professional did not do my makeup than purple or blue eyeshadow, bright pink blush with like a peachy lip. You want to make sure that the tones you've used on your eyes, your cheeks, and your lips are complementary. And going for a monochromatic look takes the guesswork out of what shades to put where. Now you might be thinking, Risa, if I'm doing a pink lip and a pink cheek, do I want to apply pink eyeshadow? Not necessarily, but what you could do and what a lot of celebrity makeup artists do, such as Patrick Ta, and I've seen Makeup by Ariel do this. In fact, I do this at the end of almost all of my makeup applications. I will take whatever blush I used on my cheeks. Today I used Stars Aligned from Give and I just run it through the crease of my eyes. And that just sort of ties everything together. I have this sort of peachy nude on my eyes, my cheeks, and my lips. And you can and should do this as one of your very, very last steps. And speaking of last steps, your very, very last step is going to be cleaning up and lifting the face using a concealer that matches your foundation or your skin tone. What I do is I take a synthetic brush like this one, I go into my Makeup Forever HD face palette, and the first thing I do is I carve out right underneath my eyeliner. Even if I have not done eyeliner and it's just eyeshadow, I personally really, really like the look of a snatched eye, meaning it looks lifted, they look more youthful, and the entire look just appears 
more professional. Because my eyes are hooded and one eye is more hooded than the other, I really struggle to do winged liner or any eyeliner at all sometimes. So with this technique or hack, I'm able to get that lifted look without having to do any sort of eyeliner or specifically winged eyeliner. I can get that lifted appearance without the extra work. If you've watched any of my makeup tutorials, say in the past year, probably two, you have seen me do this every time where I take the concealer and also apply it underneath my brow, which also gives the appearance of a more lifted eye. And for someone like me, if you're someone like me that doesn't have a lot of lid space, you wanna open up that eye as much as possible, but you don't want to have those really, really thin 90s brows. That's not the best look for most people either, but just cleaning up under the brow, giving it a nice arch, giving it a nice shape, is going to take your eye makeup to the next level. And then the final place where I apply the concealer is right around my lip line. I take the concealer brush and then lightly go around the outer corners of my lip line, paying special attention to the darkness, the shadows, right on those outer corners where my top lip meets my bottom lip. So not only is it going to get rid of the shadows around the mouth, you're also going to be emphasizing that center portion of the mouth, which is going to give the lips a fuller appearance. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll take what's ever left on the brush and just go around my nostrils for a little extra coverage. So there they are, five makeup tips or hacks that are going to elevate your makeup now I realize all of these techniques, they can take a little bit of extra time. So I'm not saying you need to do these things day in and day out. I don't. If you go and look at some of my recent makeup tutorials, you will see that I have gone in with my concealer just like this, or I haven't taken the time to use a beauty blender and bounce it all over my face to get that real flawless, seamless look. But if I'm going out to an event or I have any occasion where I want my makeup to look next level good, I am going to be doing all of these things. I like to give myself as much time as possible so that I don't forget to do any of these things so I can feel as confident in the way my makeup looks as possible. I will have all of the products I use today as well as everything that's currently on my face listed and linked down below in the description box. If you did enjoy this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will consider doing so. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and you will become part of the Risa Does Makeup family, the ever-growing Risa Does Makeup family. I do put out new content at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me over on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. My username is the same everywhere. It's Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.